Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's Los here. We back on the throne of positivity, where the first is last and the last is first. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also the notification bell so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. Thank you to everybody who has been supporting the ministry that has sown seed, that has prayed for us and really ensured that this ministry can function properly according to the ways of the world, right? There's certain aspects of life that they have to happen and I appreciate everybody who has partnered with us and has allowed us to continue to do this full time. So we appreciate you. Thank you because you're not just sowing seed you're producing a harvest that other people are able to reap from. So just know that you are making a difference. You are making an impact in ways that you may not even imagine. So thank you so much for supporting this ministry. If you would like to support the ministry and partner with our vision at Throne of Positivity, then please consider clicking one of the links in the description below. So today is currently Tuesday, August 27th. It's 10 26 in the morning and man i'm very excited for this word i have to say because it's one of those moments or seasons in your life where you go through so many things season after season and you know it seems like there's more dark seasons than there are light but there comes these moments where it finally clicks and it all makes sense. And this is one of those life defining perspective shifting like seasons for me. And I want to share with you what that looks like. And hopefully you will be able to be blessed from this as well. And the type of thing that I'm trying to describe is what was mentioned yesterday briefly on live. For anybody who doesn't know, we are Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Pacific time. We go live to do Bible studies. So if you would like to join and learn a little bit more, go ahead and do that. So what I'm talking about in regard to my season is how beautiful God demonstrates. This is why I was asking you to trust me all this time. There are many concepts, there are many things that occur in creation that can't be explained to us. We must experience them. There are many things like that in the world. And on the basis of your knowledge or your relation to that knowledge, you have to just take it for granted. And the beauty about God is that when he's asking you to trust him, it's not arbitrary. If I'm telling you, trust me, all that I'm telling you as a human being is trust me on the basis of my character, my track record, and what I believe about myself to perform or complete in your life when I say trust me. But the reality is, is that when I tell you trust me, I can fail you, right? I'm a human being that is flawed. I'm not perfect. But when God says trust me, beloved, this is the God that speaks life from the grave. This is the God that causes darkness to flee at his command. This is the God that the waves obey and the skies split before him. This is the God who teaches the sun to rise and the moon to give forth its light. He cannot change and he cannot lie. So when he tells you trust him, there's something that he knows that you don't know. And he wants you to believe in him so that he can show you why he can be trusted. And that's the most precious part to me about this process with the Lord when we're waiting on him is that he doesn't tell you trust me for the sake of his pride. For the sake of, oh, I am perfect. I, I never lied before. He, there's no pompous nature there's no snarkiness in the lord he knows it's for our benefit that we should trust him and he has good things for us and like i mentioned in last week's video he's doing all of these things and there's no benefit to him whatsoever so why wouldn't we trust him so man this, this summer has been a very interesting summer there have been many, many low points, many unexpected events that occurred, a lot of challenges, a lot of heartache, a lot of pressure, stress, many things. But 
<laughs> I received a promise from God. And that promise is, look, as I declared to you all, the second half of the year will be far greater than the first half. Now, I was telling God, and I've told you all this, how is that possible? Because at least the first five months, all the way till May, I was experiencing things that I never thought I would experience in regard to communication, in regard to intimacy, in regard to closeness, in regard to solidification, establishment, like closeness, all these different things. I never thought that it would happen the way that it did. And God is so curious in the way that he makes these things happen. And to think that the second half would be better than the first half. Now we're about to enter September. And I can say August has been such a fascinating month for me in regard to waiting on the Lord and seeing him be faithful. Like it just has me shocked. And <laughs> I want to say a couple of things and then we'll get into uh, something that I want to mention, which is you all know that I've been asking you to pray for me for the three miracles that I needed in the month of August. However, I want to talk about something briefly in regard to the book that I wrote, Enduring the Weight Guide to Achieving God's Promises. I'm going to put the link in this video on Friday, so I'll backdate it and then comment it on the video. But I can't right now because Amazon doesn't give you a link until you're book actually releases i don't know what that's about but there's something that i want to talk about before we arrive at how my mentality shifted and i think it'll be helpful for you i wrote this book as a result of intense pressure from the lord like my heart was hurting my soul was perplexed i was in a very dark place in June when I wrote this and having the ministry full time and being able to dedicate a lot of effort to it, we were able to produce something out of that pain. And, you know, that was a very confusing time of my life. However, God continued to tell me, trust me. It, it felt like a blistering blizzard, like a storm where if you've ever been in a blizzard before, there can be blinding snow in the sense that you can't see in front of yourself like almost like rain like if you've been in florida it rained so hard you could barely see five feet in front of you and that's what june felt like for me and um the only thing that i could rely on was the voice of god i couldn't rely on what i see because i couldn't see anything i couldn't rely on what i hear which is ironic because I'm saying that I relied on the voice of God, but I'll explain that. Be I couldn't rely on my hearing because the wind was too howling and screeching. It made me deaf. So I didn't have sight. I didn't have hearing. I had to rely on the inward voice, the small, still voice of the Lord in my heart. And no matter how contrary or contradicting my situation was he always reminded me trust me always reminding me of his promise where he said i want you to hope in this i want you to believe in this no matter how many things may stack themselves against you no matter what the situation may look like no matter what the reality may be he made no excuses about it but he continued to tell me, trust him because he's worthy and what he has planned is worth it. So as perplexed as my heart was, the state of my soul, I continued to push forward without sight, without being able to hear or even have orientation. I just trusted in the Lord. And I'm the type of person like I work extremely well under pressure and it's kind of like a double-edged sword because when i'm not under pressure i drag my feet i have to be honest like <laughs> i i just always like that i'm the type of person that when the deadline is deadline and you know like that's where i work my greatest work so 
God utilized this moment of extreme pressure to produce oil from that situation or that time in my life where everything felt confusing and it produced this book. Now, I have to be clear that the book is not anything personal. I didn't write anything personal. It's simply a guide to help people endure the weight and achieve God's promises. However, it just goes to show that when we become uncomfortable, when we relinquish ourselves to the Lord and allow that pain to have purpose, it produces something for the kingdom of God. And I am so excited to see what you all think about this book. And I get feedback from you. Uh, write a review on Amazon, by the way. Leave five stars. <laughs> uh, we try to get on the New York's bestsellers list. So we don't got to ask for donations anymore. We could just live on <laughs> the ministry. You know what I mean? So that'll be awesome. But um, yeah, so whatever things you are going through in your life, this season transformed me in a way that I never expected. I would have never willingly agreed to this, right? I would have never said like, yeah, Lord, I want to go through this. But I have to say that I'm glad that I went through it. I wouldn't want to go through it again. But wow, I have so much peace. And I'm a transformed man forever, like because of it. And because we trusted in the Lord, we got out to the other side. Now we can see the light. There is no more blinding snow or rain. There is no more screeching, howling wind. You start to reorient yourself to the light and to the sounds and the beauty of the paradise that he brings you to. And, you know, July was an interesting month of healing and God taking his time with me and really rehabilitating my soul. And then August came and yo it was crazy what started to happen the last week of july situation started to rack up and just it felt like the whole army of hell was against me and i needed three miracles one that week one within a week and a half after that and then one finally this week yesterday um or sunday whatever and without fail every single time god came through like without fail in the like i'm telling you when i tell you these are three impossible situations i will i won't speak about it anytime soon maybe in the future i'll say exactly what it is but for the sake of respect brevity um uh being discreet i don't want to talk about it but it's beautiful how God did the impossible for me in this situation. And I, I, the only thing that I can say is, how am I not going to believe? How can I not believe? And God did all these things. But to me, the most precious thing throughout it all is like when you are in battle and you're getting hit over and over and over again you're wrestling you're fighting you're worshiping you're praising through the storm when you don't got it all these things you become numb to it for a while but then once that numbness goes away and the wounds heal you become stronger there's scars that are left over but you become stronger and the paradigm shift that happened is like yo i'm so excited for what is to come because everything tried to destroy this promise like there were threats of like me not being able to stay in san diego anymore there were threats against my promise and every aspect of my promise my finances my health all these things my mental health everything there were threats against it all and not a single attack of the devil succeeded not one so imagine i'm in this situation not only am i receiving miracles but i'm being protected in the most impossible situation and i'm fighting in prayer fasting worship thanksgiving gratefulness towards the lord that when you finally overcome in the battle something happens and yesterday like i mentioned on live 
I got the miracle that I needed finally yesterday. And <laughs> without fail, I always tell you guys when I'm blessed, some the devil brings something as equal in opposition to try to steal my joy. And before I would react, I'll be like, ah, oh, why this and all of that? But when you go through so many battles and you see God perform miracles, you see God defend you, you see God take you out to the other side, give you renewed strength, provide for you, hold you, protect you in the shadow of the almighty, heal you, mend you, restore you as new. It's like <laughs> this, these things started coming and it's like, I don't, I don't have the strength for that. Like I believe in God. I, I saw what I needed to see. There's nothing else. Like what? like what it's like the equivalent of seeing jesus christ raised from the dead right resurrecting he's eating with you for 40 days and 40 nights you you there you not, you not only did you see it but you were able to be with the resurrected christ long enough that it just became a reality to you it's it's a paradigm shift there's not oh i saw him resurrect no we were eating and drinking day and night 40 days 40 nights i believe this and then it's like somebody comes and is like, oh, do you believe in Jesus Christ to heal this man of a headache? How am I going to believe in the bodily resurrection of Christ, but then not believe in him when this little thing comes, right? So that's the situation that really transformed my entire perspective and caused the literal paradigm shift that I will never be the same again. And I'm going to fight differently now, right? There's no wasted energy. There's no wasted effort. I know where to go. I know what to do. I know how to wait. And what's incredible of seeing God resolve all these things, financial, providential, divine, relational, mental, like f family wise, all these different things. It's like, whoa, you just have this light bulb moment where it's like, if I saw you do all of these things. Imagine what you're going to do with the promise that you gave me, like the, the to put it in one sentence or one phrase or declarative statement. We all have the dread or maybe it's just me. This was my biggest thorn in my side. We all dread the wait. Nobody wants to wait. If God told me that, yo, 12 years later, after I revealed to you who in a dream, you're your wife your firstborn child and even their names both of their names um you would have you you would still not have that would you wait no you wouldn't wait right like you wouldn't wait because it's like who wants to wait in that way and never knowing when it's gonna come but here we are 12 years later and i'm just like after all that time this is finally the moment where i'm not dreading the way i desire it and I have the excitement that I used to have before that was faulty and shaky. Before I had the excitement that it's like, man, this could be it. This is it. This is the time. This is the season. This is the day. This is the week. This is the month. Oh, this is the year. And then what happens? Days go, nights come. Nights go, days come. Suns rise, suns set. The moon rises, the moon goes away. And then you become discouraged, you become hurt and disappointed in yourself for your expectations. And it just is a painful process and you lose that excitement. And it's like, man, I thought this was it. I have that same excitement, but in a different way. I'm not excited because I have this future date in mind. I'm excited because I've already seen God do the impossible. I've seen God restore. I've seen God defend me. I've seen God fight for me. I've seen God provide for me. I've seen the most impossible miracles that I'm just like, I'm. if you're doing this now, I'm so excited. I don't dread the way I'm desiring the way because every day. I told you guys before, what hurt me before is that every day, I'm not even joking, no matter how hurt I was, every day I would wake up and I would be like, today could be the day that God blesses me with my promise that I've waited all this time. What if today was the day my wife called me or 
that I met my wife on the street and we like bump heads and you know, we is all a movie, right? I always had that excitement. But then every night it would like hurt because it's like, man, today wasn't the day. But now it's just like, I'm excited. Whatever you want to do every day, even if it's not today, that means it's built up stronger. It's refined more. We're prepared more. It's just like every day that passes that we don't receive the promise is one day better. It's like every day shall become a coin in your treasure chest, right? For your treasury. And I remember I told you guys about the vision that God gave me about my wife. I, I mention it often in May 2015, where I wrote a almost four page letter to my wife for her eyes only that I would give to her on our wedding day for her to read about this entire vision. And there's this one part, uh, not to get specific, but God spoke to me and said, your treasure is to be found in her and her treasure is to be found in you. I have locked away a treasure chest in each one of your hearts and you guys will seek each other out and in marriage alone when you come together those treasures shall be unlocked to you both that's as far as i knew right from that since then but what i've been learning recently is like as her and i are on separate paths god has each of us individually and he's enjoying us in our singleness and he's preparing us as much as possible. And every day, every season, every test that we pass, all trials, all tribulations, every tear, everything, all those are gems, jewels, crowns. All these treasures are being stored in our heart where whatever I'm going through, all those things are being laid away in my heart. And whatever she's going through, that's being laid away in the treasure of her heart. When we finally come together, the more time that passes, the more treasure there is. When we come together, finally, we're going to be able to enjoy that even more so. Not just because of the treasure that was there, because the treasure is the treasure, but because of the denial, because of the process, because of the impossibility her and I had to go through to even get to the altar. So all of that denial will lead to increased desire. And the beauty of it is, is like, Having written this book, I can't even imagine what my wife is accomplishing or what God has her doing, right? Having written this book and doing things in the ministry, I've accomplished uh, quite a bit in my life, you know, whatever it is. I'm not going to compare myself to anybody. I'm only myself. Um, but writing a book, I never, I've always imagined myself doing it. But there's a difference between imagination and reality. And it's just like, wow. We actually did it. And if that's what God is doing here, he's continuing to elevate me and push me forward. And the more he elevates me, in reality, he's elevating my wife in the way that I can prepare for her, the way that I could provide and do for her, right? And the struggles that I'm going through, she's going to benefit directly from it. And I hope these videos inspire her. I hope they prepare her. They mean something to her that they help her to make decisions or whatever like in the future when she sees them right and whatever she's going through in her life whatever she's producing whatever she's going through whatever suffering all those things whatever she's accomplishing is going to prepare her as a wife and a mother in the future that yo when we come together it's going to be for both of our benefit and instead of like two shells of individuals coming together it's like two whole individuals prepared in every single way are coming together so every day that passes now, it's like, man, it's not about, oh, I wish it was today. Now it's like, all right, if it wasn't today, then a hey, that's even better for the day that is to come. The inevitable day. Like I always think about that day, but <laughs> imagine God is our shepherd. He's the one that's leading us. He's the one that's guiding us. He's helping us to get where we need to go so that we can all receive our blessing. Right. With God by our side, there's no 
impossibility. There's no obstacle we cannot overcome. God is our shepherd and we will lack no good thing in his presence. So if we won't lack any good thing and he's making us wait, we should desire the wait. Transform our perspective about what's to come. Because, man, with God, if we maintain the faith, that impossibility will convert and become possible with the Lord. So be strong and courageous no matter where you find yourself, no matter how long you've been waiting. It doesn't matter because when God does it, it's good and it's perfect. Nothing added, nothing taken away. How much will you enjoy when you've finally received that? So just have that mentality now. So I'm excited. You know, I'm not in no rush. I know I've said that earlier this year, but I think that was more the excitement in me talking. But I, I'm serious because I've gone through so many storms that I'm really patient and I can't wait to see what the Lord does. That's what I'm excited about. Before, it was like the result is what was desired, whereas now it's like the process is what I have fallen in love with. We always talk about that, but the reality is different from theory. So I'm really in love with the process now because I can't wait to see what God has prepared in my wife. I can't wait to see what he does in her. I can't wait to see her confident and, you know, imagine her preaching the word of God and you know, all these different things and developing in the gifts that God has given her. Imagine when I meet her one day, I'm going to be like, yo, imagine all the questions we have. We can finally ask and get the answers to those things and see how did God prepare you and all these things and how did God prepare me and all these things. So anyways, family, I hope this is all encouraging and I'm able to convince you that the wait is worth it. What God has for you, beloved, if you could transition from dreading the wait to actually desiring the wait and falling in love with God and the process, imagine what's to come right? I always have the desire like, man, I wish this was the Christmas that I'm able to be with my wife. You guys always know that's my mentality. And we already at September. So <laughs> I know God can do the impossible, but I've really surrendered my calendar and my future to God. So I just hope my wife is willing to wait with me and that she would be patient, that she would give her all and continue to do what she needs to do for the kingdom of God. So that when we come together, you know, she's running along her path. I'm running along my path. When we meet, we're not stopping. We're running together now. We're going to finish the race together. So, hey, Christmas could still be a possibility. I'll just say it. <laughs> now, I, I have I have faith in God for anything. You know, I always joke and I laugh. I wonder if my wife is really, truly about it to get married. Like, hey. 40 days god reveals it to us what if you want to get married 40 60 days would you be willing to do that i wonder if she is man because i am i i've waited this long i don't need to wait longer but we shall wait we shall endure more than the watchman waits for the morning we shall wait so all of us must wait let us wait let us wait with anticipation and expectation desiring to obey god and everything but again obeying God through the process and falling in love with him more and more. So anyways, family, without further ado, that's the message. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Look forward to Friday because, man, Friday, that book is coming out and I can't wait. I can't wait to hear your feedback. I'm so excited, man. This has been a labor of love with the Lord. So anyways, family, y'all know what it is. It's low. See, we on the throne of positivity where nobody shout the throne as we out. Hey.